Good day everyone! Today we are going to talk about the properties of real numbers. First is the closure property. Closure property states that if A and B are an element of real numbers, then its sum and its product will also be an element of the real numbers. Say for example, we let A be equal to 7 and B be equal to negative 1, which are both an element of the set of integers. Then, its sum will be equal to 6, which is also an element of the set of integers, and its product will be equal to negative 6, which is also an element of the set of integers. The second one is the commutative property. It states that for all real numbers a and b, a plus b is equal to b plus a, and a times b is equal to b times a. So in other words, commutative property has something to do with the order. Say for example, we let a be equal to 3 and b be equal to 8. Then its sum will be equal to 11, which is also equal to b plus a and a times b wherein its product will be equal to 24 which is also equal to b times a the third one is the associative property it states that for all real numbers a b and c the quantity a plus b plus c is equal to a plus the quantity b plus c and the quantity a times b times c is equal to a multiplied to the quantity b times c. Okay, so associative property has something to do with the groupings. Okay, say for example, we let a be equal to negative 2, b be equal to 5, and c be equal to 7. And by substituting, all the values will get 10, and in this given, a and b is grouped and while b and c is grouped we'll also get 10 as well and that shows uh, the associative property for addition while for multiplication we have here the quantity a times b times c wherein we'll get negative 70 and we also have a multiplied to the quantity b times c wherein we'll get negative 70 as well and that shows the associative property for multiplication in associative property it doesn't matter how you group addition or multiplication the answer will still be the same the next is the distributive property of multiplication over addition this property is generally used to remove parentheses this states that for all real numbers a b and c the quantity a plus b times c is equal to a times c plus b times c which is called the left hand distributive and we also have a multiplied to the quantity b plus c which is equal to a times b plus a times c which is called the right hand distributive we call it the left hand distributive because we are to distribute to the left and we call this the right hand distributive because we are distributing to the right. Next property is the existence of an identity element. It states that for all real number a, a plus 0 is equal to a and a times 1 is equal to a. So in... This property, if you take something and add 0, the result is the same thing you started with. And if you take something and multiply it to 1, the result is the same thing that you started with as well. Okay, so that's why 0 is called the additive identity and 1 is called the multiplicative identity. Okay, for example... Let a be equal to negative 1, and a plus 0 will give us negative 1, which just leads us back to the value of a. Same thing goes if we multiply 1 to the value of a, so that will just give us the value of a again. So, that is for the identity property.
The last one is the existence of inverse. Inverse should make you think opposite. Okay? So it states that for all real number A, A plus negative A is equal to 0, and A multiplied to 1 over A is equal to 1. We call negative of A the additive inverse and the reciprocal of A the multiplicative inverse. It's because the sum of a number and its opposite is 0 and the product of a number and its reciprocal is equal to 1. So that's why negative of A is called the additive inverse and reciprocal of A is called the multiplicative inverse. Let's now proceed to the properties of equality. So these are just the names for things you know are true. However, you have to know what it's called. First one is the reflexive property of equality, which is probably the most obvious of all the properties. It states that for all real number A, then A is equal to A. Second one is the symmetric property of equality. It states that for all real numbers A and B, if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. So even if we switch it around the equal sign, it will still be the same. Third one is the transitive property of equality. It states that for all real numbers A, B, and C, if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then that means that I can get these two ends here and they are equal. Fourth is the addition property of equality. It states that for all real numbers A, B, and C, if A is equal to B, then A plus C is equal to B plus C. Fifth is the multiplication property of equality states that for all real numbers a, b, and c, if a is equal to b, then a times c is equal to b times c. The sixth is the substitution property of equality. This is the commonly used property and it states that if two values are equal, so let's say a and b, then one can replace the other in an expression or equation without changing the meaning of the statement and lastly the cancellation law it states that for all real numbers a b and c if a plus c is equal to b plus c then a is equal to b and if a times c is equal to b times c then a is equal to b so cancellation law is just like the opposite of addition and multiplication property of equality. So we have here the definition of subtraction and division. For subtraction of all real numbers a and b, a minus b is equal to a plus negative b. And for the division of all real numbers a and b, if b is not equal to 0, then a over b is equal to a times 1 over b, which will be equal to a over b. And that's it for the properties of real numbers. Thank you guys for listening and we hope that you learned.